right guys, well, this is William Myers from Mass Outdoors and we got one of our students out here, actually we've been training him a lot. He's actually going to be an assistant instructor for me because my classes are, are getting really big in size. So I want the one-on-one -on -one attention that you get when it's splitting off into smaller groups. So I'm actually training Austin here to be an assistant instructor at Manus Outdoors. So we're going through some bow drill set uh, with him, some bow drill techniques with him. And he's been improving on his bow drill and uh, Chris just thought it was a pretty good opportunity to get it on film, get a bow drill video on his channel. Yeah, because there's my bow drill. <laughs> Instant gratification. But well, let's go over here and see what Austin's doing now. All right, so first I wanted to explain the components to the bow drill set itself. We're going to have a bearing block, and this should be made out of a hardwood, something that's going to impart the friction, you know, displace that a little bit. You don't want to start a fire in your hand. You want to start a fire in the actual bow drill set itself into the hearth board, which we have right here. And this is what you would call a proven set. We have runs many, many times on here. Austin is practicing nonstop, trying to own this skill, and this is one of the boards that he uses a lot. What you can see right here, he has a hole started. This is what he's going to run in right now. He's going to uh, burn into this, and then he's going to cut a notch into the burn, or the hole that, that he burns into. He's going to cut a pretty tight V, and then what I like to do as you can see on the back side, is it's carved out a little bit. That's going to, one, it's going to collect a little bit more of a coal and it's going to allow air to access. And, you know, you need three parts of the fire triangle to work with you. You need heat, you need fuel, and you need air. So, all three of them are in these. Alright, so we have the spindle right here. And this is either, this is a cottonwood set. Yeah. This is made out of cottonwood, so both parts of this is made out of cottonwood. And obviously, we have the bow here, and that really doesn't matter what you're making it out of, as long as it, you know, it, it can be straight. But when you're first starting out, I prefer kind of something that actually looks like a bow. Well, let's go ahead and drop that here. But I see a lot of people that really worry about, you know, should I make my bow drill set the spindle out of a hardwood and uh, the hearthboard out of a softwood? Should I do this wood? Get from this tree? Just get one tree, a cedar. A white pine that doesn't have any resin in it, that, that white meat pine, um, a cottonwood, tulip poplar, you know, just one piece of, and, of wood and bust your bow drill set out of that, and that's, that's all you need. You know, you don't need to run around the woods getting 30 different components to this bow drill. Just keep it simple. Alright, so once you have all your components made, it's time to start your bow drill set. I'm going to actually just go through the techniques, the form with you real quick, and then we're going to have uh, Austin come over and run the actual bow drill set and get his ember on camera. But the part of the spindle that you want to run on the board, you want to point that up. And then if you're right-handed or left-handed, I'm right-handed. Take your, your bow, put it through the rope just like that, and torque that around. And you want it to be pretty tight. Just like that, that's pretty good. That's what I want to hear. And <clears throat> you don't want this to be on the ground. That's why we have these, these leaves on here because we're actually by the creek bed doing this and the sandy soil is very, very wet and I don't want any of these components to touch the ground as much as possible. So when I'm done with this, either I'll, I'll take it off by hand and put it in my pocket or I'll put it somewhere where I know it's not going to collect moisture from the ground because you want everything to be in your favor when you're running one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and step on the board and just show you the form. I want my ankle to be right at the edge of the board so that when I go to lock my wrist in, the spindle is going to be straight up and down just like this. And then I can kind of angle it however I want if I want to dump my, my coals this way or what have you. And what I want to do with this knee is I want to stick that right in behind of my leg and then cock my other foot out. That way I have three points of contact with the ground, and I'm almost looking like a tripod, basically. And what I like to do is stick my bearing block on my foot, get everything all set to go, and then we'll move all this stuff, but I'm just showing you how to run. And then, just really start slow. You don't need to put a bunch of downward pressure on this. I'm barely putting any downward pressure right now. And I've got my wrist really locked in right now. And then I'll start to add just a little bit of downward pressure. And that's how we run on the bow drill set. 
let's go ahead and get Austin over here and have him run Oop. and uh, actually burn in, cut his notch on camera and try to get a coal, see how he does. And Austin's going to try to burn this in right now and this is the one key to the bow drill set. You're really going to see, you're going to get a lot of identification of what the bow drill set is going to do just by burning in. <laughs> we're going to see if we're going to get good smoke. We're going to see if we get good black dust. If we get, you know, light tan or brown dust, that's not a very good sign. And I can already see we're getting some nice black dust. So... I think we're going to be good here. Now he's done burning in. Now he's going to take a spindle and he's going to either put it in his pocket or he's going to put it somewhere where it's not going to get moisture from the ground. My pants are still wet. You can put it on this, uh, this bark here, this cottonwood bark. And the same thing with that, um, with that hearth board. And what he's doing there is that black dust that he burnt in, he's saving that and that's useful as well. You want my Leatherman? Yeah, that's cool. Quick. Yeah, we just need that one. Take it quicker? Yeah. I could do it that way, it'd just take a long time. Well, that's fine, yeah, it's just in the interest of time, just use the saw on this Leatherman. The tool? Yeah. Love it. I'm going to do a review on it side by side with the Wave because I mean the Wave has the scissors on it, things like that, other tools that I like, but Super Tool is made bulletproof almost. It's made really, really well. Splitting it. Hmm. See, you look, you're like almost like you're panicked, like, oh, it's splitting. No, I'm just not used, to, not used to your saw. Yeah, it chews That's, it up. Be careful that you don't go too far into that notch. That's why I keep chucking it. Yeah. Mine's dull, so I can just run that thing like crazy and it won't <laughs> do anything. Now he wants to make his V as tight as possible. That's pretty far into that hole, bro. That's cool. I would stop yeah. right there. He wants to make his V as tight as possible, but he also wants to make a pretty wide notch at the same time. <laughs> and uh, the wider the notch you have, the bigger the coal you're going to get at the same time. I would have just I'd, made two slices with the saw, just ting ting. Yeah, I'd do that, but I dress I'd, it up with my knife. I just like doing it like this. All right. Well, just, however you like doing it. Yeah. Whatever gets you the job done. That cottonwood is such a soft wood anyway, man, you know? Yeah. It's expensive. It's different if you had like a chunk of flint or something. Yeah, it sucks. You're going to have to do that here in a little bit. Completely primitive. Primitive cordage, pine roots, or what I would suggest is, is pine root yeah. for your cordage and uh, flint for your tool. It's not fun. Well, okay, it is fun, but it's hard. I guess it all depends on what your description of fun is, I guess. It's not my description <laughs> right. of fun. It wouldn't be Chris's fun. <clears throat> it's my kind of fun, though. PLSK1, you want to work? Yeah, I love this knife, man. <laughs> this thing's awesome. That's good. Here we go. See what happens. All right, now he's going to run on the bow, on the uh, on the bow, on the hearth board. He's going to attempt to get a coal now. It's go time. Dress, dress, dress that up a little bit. Okay. So when he's burning in, he's charring that 
and he's also glassing it a little bit and it won't get good friction it's really smooth right now you want to make all kinds of knots in it like a soccer ball almost that way you get lots of friction dress that top up too yeah Now, if you've seen Austin kind of gave that a once over, he's looking for any splits and cracks in the top of his spindle. Because that means air is going to escape and he's not going to get good friction. All right. See what happens. Now, if you see, he's not really putting a lot of downward pressure in. You're going to hear that squeaking. That's going to stop here in a second once the bow drill set starts to warm up. It already has stopped. You're going to start seeing smoke here in a little bit. You can see he's speeding up. He's kind of leaning into it a little bit. So his, his dust dumps into his V notch. He's getting a lot of good smoke now. Oh, and then that happens. It happens, bro. Really. It sucks. Just try to keep trying. No biggie, man. Just pulled it right out of there. Attempt number two. Whoops. Stopped on a whammy. <laughs> no whammy, no whammy, stop. It happens. Greatest game show ever. <laughs> It was cool because when I was a kid, you know, little cartoon characters that went across the screen. What was that called? Press your luck. Press your luck. Yeah. Right. Dating myself again. <laughs> All right, time number two. Let's try this again. <laughs> yeah. Did you get sand in that? Yeah, I had to. I've actually heard out. of people putting up one grain of sand in the bow drill. Oh yeah, just I've, making it. Yeah, I've, I've heard, I've not done it myself, friction. but I've heard of people doing it before. One single grain of sand right in the, in the um, socket. Whatever works, you know. Take two. Hmm? Take two. Will this be the Jessica Bodril set? The Jessica Bodril set. That generally helps if you just say Jessica, Jessica, Jessica when you're doing that. Pressure. You get a slip like that, you're imparting too much downward pressure. Time to rock and roll, bro. Till you gas out. What do you got? Baby it. Yeah, you got lots of time. Yeah, you got a cool. You don't want to be blowing on that at all right now. This is the time where you kind of catch your breath. What he's doing is he's adding a little bit more black dust on top of it, kind of just feeding that coal, making it bigger. Thank you. Wait, so you're not even going to want to pick that coal up until you start seeing red. And I'll just kind of go ahead and let it go right now, Austin, and just let it congeal up. Because what's going on, this is dust right now, but once all that dust starts to superheat, it's going to congeal into like a cigar ash coal. And you don't want to be messing with it until you start seeing red. Yeah, that was a bad move there. Yeah, 
want to make sure if this coal goes out and you're not able to blow up the flame, you want to be able to run on it again. So you don't want to put your uh, load drill set on the ground, on the wet ground. I see red. Time, time to fly, bro. Just be careful. This is where most accidents happen with these when it's time to dump the coal. Now you want to start out real slow with this. You don't want to give it big breaths. You want to baby it right now. Kind of give it a small, tiny breath. Getting it deeper into its pile. Yeah, take the breaths. But you don't want to be blowing this thing real hard. All right. Good job, Austin. Thanks. That's definitely a pass, bro. <laughs> that ran out of fluid. What are you going to do now? <laughs> Everybody start whipping all the fire stuff out. See, I said 50-50. <laughs> hey, you got it, man. That's 50-50. Good job. This is the advantage oh, of wide having a wide brim hat, brother. Wide brim hat. All right, guys, this has been William Myers, Mass Outdoors. Just wanted to definitely show you guys the techniques to run on a bow drill. Hopefully, this encourages you to go out and attempt this. You know, find a tree, look it up on uh, online. There's lots of resources out there if you haven't tried this already or if you haven't researched, researched it yourself. Uh, depending on what your area is, like I said, the tulip poplars work really good for this. Obviously, as you've seen, cottonwood, which is a, a member of the poplar family. Tulip poplar actually isn't a poplar. It's, it's, it's part of the magnolia family. It's a, it's a tulip tree. Uh, the pine trees, white pines, work really well. I mean, there's lots of trees out there, lots of, of wood out there that will work really well for this. Uh, just, you know, like I said, do your research and get out there and, and try this, attempt this. You know, there's there's a, a video on my channel, which is Manus Outdoors, and I go through making the bow drill set, you know, front to back, everything. So hopefully, like I said, this has encouraged somebody to go out and try this, and uh, it's really fun. Being able to, it's an achievement to be able to get fire from friction fire. It makes you feel like, you know, you're more confident out in the woods. So, this has been William Myers from Manus Outdoors. It's Chris for Paired Mind 101. Thanks for uh, watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel. Liking the video helps us out a lot. Appreciate all your views, comments, and support. Hopefully, we'll see you out in the woods.